மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் ஹாய் வெல்கம் டு மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் சேனல் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் அருணா சண்முகவேல் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லேர்ன் அபவுட் த மிடில் பார்ட் ஆஃப் நார்மா பேசாலிஸ் தட் எக்ஸ்டென்ட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் போஸ்டீரியர் ஃப்ரீ பார்டர் ஆஃப் ஹார்ட் பேலட் அப் டு தி இமேஜினரி லைன் ட்ரான் த்ரூ தி அன்டீரியர் மார்ஜின் ஆஃப் ஃபராமன் மேக்னம் Before starting the session, let us see a quote. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. The bones seen in the middle part of Norma Basalis are infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid, inferior surface of petrous part of temporal bone, tympanic surface, and squamous part of temporal bone basilar part of occipital bone the middle part of norma basalis has a bar of bone in the middle this bar is formed by body of sphenoid bone and basi occiput the joint between these two is synchondrosis and completes at the age of 25 1 cm anterior to the anterior margin of foramen magnum a tubercle is seen called pharyngeal tubercle this tubercle gives attachment to median raphe of pharynx superior constrictor pharyngobasilar fascia and buccopharyngeal fascia immediately lateral to pharyngeal tubercle longest capitis muscle is attached just behind this attachment that is anterior to occipital condyle rectus capitis anterior muscle is attached the other features seen in the lateral area are pterygoid process foramen ovale foramen spinosum foramen lazerum spine of sphenoid sulcus tube carotid canal mandibular fossa let us see one by one the pterygoid process are paired process of sphenoid bone each process has two plates medial pterygoid plate and lateral pterygoid plate the two plates are fused in the upper part and separated in the lower part by pterygoid fissure Between the two pterygoid plates, there is a space called pterygoid fossa. This fossa is filled by deep head of medial pterygoid muscle. The posterior border of medial pterygoid plate bifurcates in its upper end and forms boundary for scaphoid fossa. This fossa gives origin to the muscle tensor veli palatinae. The lower end of medial pterygoid plate shows a hook-like projection called pterygoid hamulus. The tendon of tensor veli palatinae winds round the pterygoid hamulus. Pterygoid hamulus gives attachment to pterygomandibular raphe. The lateral pterygoid plate gives origin to lower head of pterygoid. lateral pterygoid muscle from its lateral surface at the same time the medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate gives origin to deep head of medial pterygoid muscle in my experience i have seen most of the students who feel it tough to locate the foramina in norma basalis let me give you a clear cut idea to trace these foramina very easily are you ready trace the posterior border of lateral pterygoid plate upwards just behind this is the oval shaped foramina called foramen ovale posterior lateral to foramen ovale is the foramen spinosum near the spine of sphenoid posterior medial to foramen ovale is the foramen lacerum immediately 
posterior to the foramen ovale is the sulcus tube just behind the sulcus tube is the carotid canal lateral to foramen spinosum and carotid canal observe the mandibular fossa now let us see the structures passing through each foramina foramen ovale transmits mandibular nerve emissary vein connecting cavernous sinus with pterygoid plexus accessory meningeal artery and lesser petrosal nerve through foramen spinosum middle meningeal artery and nervous spinosum pass the spine of sphenoid is medially related to cauda tympani nerve and laterally related to auriculotemporal nerve sometimes an unusual foramen may be present between foramen ovale and spinosum called canaliculus innominatus which transmits lesser petrosal nerve medial to foramen ovale sometimes another unusual foramen may be present called emissary sphenoidal foramen of vesalius if it is present it transmits an emissary vein that connects cavernous sinus with pterygoid plexus of veins the foramen lacerum is covered by a fibrocartilage and two structures are traversing this they are internal carotid artery and greater petrosal nerve the structures passing through foramen lacerum are meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein connecting cavernous sinus with pharyngeal plexus of veins the sulcus tube lodges cartilaginous part of auditory tube the carotid canal transmits internal carotid artery and sympathetic plexus around it the mandibular fossa has articular and non articular parts the articular part is seen in squamous part of temporal bone and non articular part is formed by tympanic plate the articular part is anteriorly limited by articular eminence and articulates with condyle of mandible to form temporomandibular joint the non articular part is related to parotid gland between the articular and non articular parts squamotympanic fissure is seen which is divided into two petrosquamous and petrotympanic by the downturned anterior edge of tegment tympani in petrosquamous fissure there are no structures and in petrotympanic fissure there are three structures passing and remember all the three are related to middle ear cavity and start with the word anterior what are these structures the anterior ligament of malleus anterior canaliculus for cauda tympani anterior tympanic branch of first part of maxillary artery shall we end up this session with a quote take care of your body it is the only place you have to live thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon Tell it all to get instant notification.